Bernard King may not be as well known today, but back in his time, he was an elite scorer that was respected by many greats of the game. We love wing players like Kobe, Jordan, and Carmelo for their skillful post play, and Bernard King may as well have been one of the best wing post players of all time. At 6'7", with a good wingspan, he had the physical tools as well as possessed a great deal of quickness and strength. He would use both to either bulldoze into the paint or get to one of his spots for his elite level mid-range jumper. Something that pops out to me right away about King that was really impressive was how quick he would get to his spot. He knew exactly where he could get to with his athleticism and strength, and he wouldn't waste any movements to get to the places he knew he could shoot. This made it so that his defenders weren't able to get in a position with him as they were always rushing to keep up with King. One of King's go-to moves was dribbling to the left side of the court and into the defender before rising up for a fadeaway shot. In a way, this really reminds me of Sweet Lou Williams with how he would be comfortable shooting fading to his left. King, however, always looked to dribble into his defender, which gave him two main advantages. One was that he got himself closer to the basket, which made the shot easier, and two was that he was able to rise up quicker and higher than his defender, who would have a hard time jumping as they were backpedaling. Even though he was moving at quick speeds and fading, he was athletic enough to align himself with the basket before shooting. He also had an extremely high release point and fantastic arc, which allowed him to shoot over defenders even when he was so close to them. Along with his physical tools, he also had insanely good touch. If a second defender rotated to double on him, then he would elect to shoot a quicker, high-arching floater and his touch was so good that it would softly land into the net. Even if his defender gave him space or pushed him away from the basket, then he could still make his fadeaway shot from farther out. He was so comfortable with the shot, there's a quote of him saying, he would practice shots with his eyes closed to shoot over defenders, and it showed because he only really needed a glimpse at the rim before shooting. If he overplayed his drive, then he would counter with a spin move to his right, taking big steps outside of your foot to get a space advantage on you for the open shot. but even if you played good defense on him, he was confident enough to just rise up in your face. When King looked to post up, he did a good job of getting as close to the paint as possible. If his defender let him get really deep in the paint, then they had no chance to stop him with his speed and strength. Before getting the post pass, he made sure to feel how his defender was guarding him, and as soon as he got the ball, he would attack accordingly. Again, he was really good at making quick movements, and he was so fast and decisive that he could get a good shot before the defender was in a good position to contest his shots. This play fully embodies that notion. He recognizes which side his defender was guarding him and called for the post pass on the opposite side. Then in mid-air, he catches the pass and immediately aligns himself with the basket to take a shot as soon as he lands. Even though he was fast, he still used pump fakes when the defenses were closing out hard, showing his ability to read defenses. He also would incorporate several shimmy or misdirection moves just to freeze his defender if he felt he still needed extra space to shoot. Because he was so strong and relentless with getting post position, King would always get fouled and some of his biggest scoring games involved him getting to the line when people would foul him to stop him getting in the post. As a result, if you played him farther from the post, he would go under and seal his defender in giving his art the easy lob pass. And if he was in the post and you were right up on him, then he would just blow by you with his quickness to get to the basket. When deep in the paint, he also would go off two feet to absorb the contact from his defender, which gave him the power to finish even when fouled. And again, no matter how you played him, he could always just rise up and fire even though you were right up on him. In the open court, Bernard also used his quickness and strength to attack with ferocity. He could go off two feet for the two-handed slam, or he could slither past the defense with good footwork. Because he was so strong, he was hard to guard when driving with a full head of steam.
For all his talent, King was tough as hell. In a playoff game against the Pistons, King led his team to a win while playing with two dislocated fingers and the flu, showing that he had the ability to will his team to a win. And for a style of play that was really physical and involved him getting hacked a lot, he never backed down from attacking the paint. Not only was he a great scorer for his generation, but he also has several records that showed he could have been one of the greatest scorers of all time. He is one of a very small amount of players to score 50 points with multiple teams, and one time he even scored back-to-back 50-point -back games. In 1985 to 1986, he was having his best season, averaging a scary 32.1 points per game, but unfortunately, a severe injury derailed that season, and from then on, he would lose a good deal of his explosiveness. He was later released by the Knicks at the end of the 1987 season. It's a shame that he had to deal with injuries because he really was starting to look like a historic scorer. Amazingly though, in the 1987-1988 season, he returned with the Washington Bullets and was able to average three 20 points per game season, including a 28.4 points per game season at the age of 34 during the 1990-1991 season. In that season, he was an all-star and really showed how tough and determined King was in order to come back from a devastating injury and still play at an all-star level. Sadly, he isn't as remembered today because of lack of playoff success. However, we never really got to see his true prime, so there is an element of what if in his career. Despite a lack of playoff success, for a period of time, King was a great scorer and one of the best wing post players ever. He has inspired other great scorers like Carmelo Anthony, and you could see his moves being replicated to this day with other greats. There is no doubt that if King played in today's game, he would be just as dominant because he really was that great.